We live in a world where people are totally preoccupied by their safety, and especially in these times we're living through right now. But the truth is that the more you focus on your safety, the more you worry about your safety, the more you're going to make yourself miserable, the more you're going to make society miserable, and ironically, the less safe you are going to be. A great allegory of this actually is the story of Sleeping Beauty. And if you don't remember the story of Sleeping Beauty, the, the quick version is that the, uh, the princess is born, and then on the day of the princess's birth, this evil witch comes to the king and queen and tells them that when the princess turns 16, she's, the, the witch is putting a curse on the princess so that when she turns 16, she's going to prick her finger on a spinning wheel and she's going to die. And then the king and the queen are so freaked out by this, they're so afraid of this witch's curse, that they order that every spinning wheel in the kingdom be burned and they force their daughter to live in a little hut in the forest until after her 16th birthday so that nobody can find her. And so the girl grows up in the forest with three fairies who are her protectors and then the day that she turns 16, she manages to find a spinning wheel and prick her finger on the spinning wheel anyway and one of the three fairies casts a spell that instead of dying from pricking her finger, she's only going to fall asleep. And then a handsome prince comes along to save the princess, and in order to save her, he has to fight the witch, who turns herself into a dragon. So he goes and fights the dragon, he kills the dragon, and then uh, he finds the girl and kisses her, and his kiss makes her wake up and they live happily ever after. I wanted to start with this story because it's a really, it's a perfect illustration of the point that I'm making here. And actually that's something that's true in general about our most cherished stories, our favorite fairy tales, our, our mythology usually is allegorical in some way and proves some, some point that resonates with our spiritual being. Which, by the way, I'm getting a lot of this from Jordan Peterson, so if you want to hear it explained better, then watch some of his lectures. But anyway, the story of Sleeping Beauty shows what happens when we are obsessed with safety. So let's take a look at what happens in the story. When the king and queen learn about this witch's curse, they try to destroy all of the danger in the kingdom. They burn all of the spinning wheels, right? So that she can't prick her hand on a spinning wheel. They shunt her off to the forest, and guess what? It doesn't work, right? She still pricks her, her finger on the spinning wheel. She still finds a spinning wheel, even though the, the king and queen proclaimed, which is something that's kind of tyrannical to do, if you think about it. Like, how many, uh, how many people in the kingdom made their living because of, of using spinning wheels, right? They're gonna get rid of a tool so that they can, they can have this illusion of safety. And then, in the same way, they send her away to a little hut in the forest and don't let her have contact with anybody. And it doesn't work, right? One, their, their proclamation about burning all the spinning wheels, well, even if they proclaim that, there are still spinning wheels that survived, right? There is at least a, one spinning wheel for her to prick her hand on. And the fact that they're putting her in the forest away from all danger just makes her weak and naive. And so she doesn't even understand the concept of danger. She doesn't even understand that there are bad things in the world uh, that she should avoid. And so because of this, when she sees the spinning wheel, she goes and touches it because she doesn't know any better and she falls asleep. And then what happens after that? How is she saved? Well, she is saved by the handsome prince who fights the dragon. Well, what does that represent? Well, the prince who fights the dragon is somebody who voluntarily puts himself in danger, who voluntarily faces a dangerous situation in order to do something good for somebody else, in order to do what is right. And that's what saves her. We live in a society where we're preoccupied with safety, where we're trying to burn all the spinning wheels, and we're trying to hide in the forest away from anything outside that could get us. Right? Does that sound familiar to what's going on right now? And the only person that saves us from this situation is the person who is willing to take up his sword and his armor and voluntarily go and fight the dragon, who is voluntarily willing to go and face the dangerous circumstances of life head on instead of cowering in a hole. This story is so compelling because this is exactly how life works. If you hide away in the forest and burn all the spinning wheels, you're making yourself weak, you're making yourself naive, and you're not going to be able to keep the danger out. It's going to come and get you anyway, and you're not going to be prepared to deal with it. Humans are anti-fragile beings. What that means is that we gain strength 
from adversity. We gain strength from difficulty. And if we don't get any adversity, we don't have any difficulty, we don't have any danger, then we get weaker and weaker and weaker until we die. Now, this anti-fragile concept actually explains a lot of things in life. Um, I'm getting this from a, the book called Anti-Fragile by Nassim Taleb, which I highly recommend if you haven't read it already. I'll put the link in the description below. Read that book. It will absolutely change the way you see the world. But anyway, we are anti-fragile beings, that we need adversity, we need stress, we need hardship, in order to be able to grow and in order to be able to thrive. You know, one of the easiest ways to think about that is going to the gym, right? You go to the gym and you put your muscles under stress so that they get stronger. And many parts of our being actually work in exactly the same way. This works on a physical level, it works on a societal level, as a, as a people overall, it works on a financial level, and it works on a spiritual level. And it might work on more levels than I'm talking about here, but think about, for example, your immune system, right? Uh, this is really relevant to right now because a lot of people are hiding away in their homes, not seeing anybody, keeping their distance from anybody on the street, wearing masks, spraying Lysol on everything, washing their hands every 15 seconds, and killing all of the germs and, and completely uh, avoiding any possible danger from, from germs around them. And this is completely antithetical to the way that the immune system works because the immune system works by exposure to germs. Just like your muscles are going to atrophy uh, if you are not lifting weights or if you're not doing any physical activity, well, your immune system is going to atrophy if you are not exposed to any germs. This is why babies put everything in their mouths. I mean, have you ever noticed this is something that they do instinctually? They take dirty objects full of germs and put them in their mouth. They're doing, they have that instinct because their instinctual being knows that those germs are going to be a workout for their immune system, that they need those germs in order for their immune system to get stronger. Now, of course, this does have a natural limit. I mean, you don't wanna go like swimming in sewage to get extra exposure to germs because just like when you're, when you're working out, you don't wanna overtrain. Right? There's such thing as overtraining. If you're, if you're lifting weights for three hours straight, then your muscles are not going to like you for it. Right? You've got to put some stress, but you've got to control the amount of stress. But so many of us are so obsessed with safety and we're so obsessed with comfort, which is really the same thing. If you're comfortable all the time, then you're not getting any stress on your body and your body is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And then what's true on a personal level compounds itself when that personal tendency is, is multiplied into a society of a whole bunch of people that have that same tendency. Which reminds me of a story um, about two years ago, more or less, I was in Brazil and I was, uh, I was at the beach in Rio de Janeiro on Ipanema Beach in the middle of the day. It was a beautiful day, a uh, bright sunny day with tons of people all over the place. And I saw a, a group of guys, one guy uh, walked by and, and grabbed a woman's purse and started trying to pull it away from her. And I um, like yelled something and started running at the guy. I don't even know what I was going to do. I was going to punch him or tackle him or something. I just saw the guy try to take the girl's purse away. And so I started running after him and uh, I, I chased the guy away. Like he, he saw me coming at him and he ran away. Um, and then right after that, like all the people around, you know, this was broad daylight in front of a whole bunch of people. The people there were saying, oh, you shouldn't have done that because he might have a gun or he might have a knife. He could have killed you. And so I lived in Brazil for a while and I noticed that that's the basic attitude there, that um, you have to take care of your own safety and you should never try to fight back against a criminal because that criminal might hurt you. And I thought, you know, if this had happened in Tennessee, I was just in Tennessee for a week, if anything like that had happened in Tennessee, that, um, that, that criminal would have been on the ground or dead with like 15 guys on top of him in a matter of seconds. Right, I mean, it's something I've always admired about people in the South, which I don't consider myself at all. I'm pretty much as Yankee as they come, even though I live in Florida. But Southern guys, it seems like they're, they're completely fearless. They love God and they stand up for what they believe in, much better than most of us in the world. But anyway, the fact that these people were telling me, oh, I, I shouldn't have uh, gone to, to try to help this woman who was being robbed, it's like, that's why the criminals operate with impunity because your whole society has this attitude.
And of course, the government is the same thing. They don't even allow you to own a gun in Brazil. I mean, it's, it's exactly the same story as the spinning wheels in Sleeping Beauty. They say, oh, guns are dangerous. Guns make people get killed. We'll just decree that all the guns have to go away, and that'll solve the problem. And of course, it doesn't work. It makes everybody less safe. It means that the criminals can kill, can rob, can rape with impunity. And it means that the government can be as tyrannical as it wants to, and it doesn't really have to worry about any retribution from the people. Which the government there is taking full advantage of right now, by the way. They're being absolutely horrible. So you see what happens is that you give away your liberty, like Benjamin Franklin said, that if you give away your liberty in order to get safety, then you're going to have neither liberty nor safety. And history has repeated that over and over and over again in all parts of the world. Whenever a society gives away its liberty to the government and says, protect us, provide for us, uh, the government is perfectly happy to do that. And then, like in the case with all the communist countries, they, they say, okay, we'll protect you, we'll provide for you, and then they turn around and murder their own citizens by the tens of millions. So this blind chasing after this false god of safety is absolutely destroying societies. Chasing after safety will also destroy you financially. If you've ever thought, oh, I'm going to work at the same job for 40 years, doing the same thing for 40 years because it's a stable job, it's a reliable job, and then uh, after I finish, then I'm going to get a pension, you know, I'm going to put money in my 401k plan, or I'm going to rely on the government social security program, right? There's That word security means the same thing as safety. The government is saying, oh, give us your money, or rather let us take your money by force, and then we're going to keep it safe for you. And guess what happened? The, the safety provided by the government is bankrupt. The fund is bankrupt. Social Security has no more money left, and it's not going to be available for us. Whenever we give up our liberty for safety, we end up having neither. And the same thing with when you're in that reliable job, uh, and then the market crashes, and then you lose your reliable job. Or maybe it's just a different market, right? That the, the, you used to be a... a candlestick maker, and then Edison invents the light bulb, and all of a sudden, you're out of a job. Well, what are you going to do? Right? That job wasn't as safe as you thought. Or maybe you had all of your retirement money in a 401k plan that was invested in the stock market, and then the stock market crashes. What are you going to do? You thought you were being safe, but it's not safe. If you really wanted to be safe, you should have put some stress on yourself. You should have gone out and learned a new skill. You should have gone out and started a business. You should have learned some things that you can fall back on in hard times instead of staying at the same stupid job, doing the same stupid office work over and over and over again. And then when that job disappears, you've got what? You've got nothing. And then finally, and most importantly, we are anti-fragile spiritually. If you seek safety as your goal in your life and you're willing to avoid doing the right thing, the thing that you know that you're called to do, you avoid your purpose in life or you avoid uh, standing out and speaking up for the thing that you know to be right because you're worried about safety, how are you going to feel? You're going to be depressed, you're going to be guilty, and you're going to know that your lack of action or your cowardice is causing harm to other people. I mean, if you think about my story about, uh, about Brazil, when I attacked that guy who was stealing the woman's purse, and by the way, I'm not trying to like toot my own horn here. I mean, there, there's other instances where I've been in similar situations and I've completely chickened out. So I'm not trying to say, oh, look how high and mighty I am. But it's just the, the best example that I have. Uh, in that example, if I had done nothing, if I had stood by and let that woman get robbed, well, how would I have felt about that? I would have been totally guilty. I would have been depressed. And all for avoiding a, a possible negative outcome, which isn't even a negative outcome, right? I mean, these are times where your, your faith in God is tested if you are a religious person. Because the people that were telling me that I could have died from what I did, they're right. You know, there's a lot of criminals that have guns, that have knives, and they kill people with impunity over there. So yes, I could have died, but I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, the scripture says that all things work together for good for those who do good. Or, you know, I'm probably butchering it, but if you do good, then everything will work out for you in the end. And I absolutely believe that. And so if doing the right thing that day meant that I was going to die then that was exactly the time that I should have died. And that's not a bad thing. Like I talked about in another video, this life on earth 
is just like a day in the office. We're coming here to get some work done and then we're going home. So if I died at 30 years old, then it would be like getting sent home after half a day at work, right? It's not a bad thing. In fact, most people would be pretty happy to get a half day. It's not my responsibility to determine where and when I die. That's God's job. My job is to do what I was sent to this earth to do, to do righteousness, to do the right thing. And then when I am doing the right thing, I will die at the time that I am appointed to die. And by the way, if I uh, save myself from death because of being a coward, then I'm just stealing extra time on the earth that I was not supposed to be alive anyway, and I'm missing out on whatever is waiting for me in the spiritual place, whatever was appointed for me after my life on earth had finished. And so whenever we fail to do what we know is right, whenever we hold our tongues because what we have to say is unpopular, even though it's true and even though it's right, or when we fail to take an action because we're afraid of danger to our physical bodies, or we all destroy our economy collectively uh, because we're afraid of getting sick, every time we do something like that, we are destroying our self-respect and we are heaping mounds of guilt upon us that are going to hold us down and are going to make us less healthy. When we act in that way, when we fail to do what's right, when we fail to have courage, we are harming society for everybody around us as well as ourselves. And by the way, I'm not saying that you should go out and like seek danger for no other reason than, than to get in danger. Right? I mean, if you do something stupid like you overdose on heroin or you, you're like racing a motorcycle with no helmet and you die, well, I mean, that's basically akin to a suicide. That's basically, you're, you're leaving the office early without having done your work. That's not good. The point here is not to go seek out danger. The point is to be willing to face danger when it's the right thing to do, and also not to hide away from the world, not to hide away from every single danger, because some, some danger, some stress, some difficulty is necessary in order to keep you strong, to keep you tough, in order so that you are able to do the things that you need to do. So I hope that helps you. I hope that inspires you to stand up for what's right, to do what you know is right, and to be willing to challenge yourself and not get too caught up in comfort and safety along with the rest of the world. Because the people who get caught up in those have no self-respect, they don't like themselves, and they're depressed. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be in a society of people that lives like that. So start with yourself. Don't live that way. Now, now as a little thank you for watching my video, for supporting me on YouTube, I have a little freebie I'd like to offer you. It's called Eight Daily Habits for Happiness, Success, and Spiritual Fulfillment. You can get it for free at the link below. Uh, I hope you take a look at that. I hope you really love it. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you're the first to get all my new stuff. Share this video with anybody else who you think might benefit from it. And if you like this video, I think you'll also really enjoy this video all about my take on what the purpose of life actually is.